All right, today we're taking a look at three sum, which is an interesting variation on the popular two sum problem. Um, so given an integer array nums, we're returning all the triplets uh, such that they are each element is distinct, each index is distinct, and each element, each value is uh, also going to sum to zero. Um, there's no duplicate triplets, so let's look at the example. So we're given this array, and we want to find all the triplets that add up to zero. So you want to find A, B, C that add up to zero. Um, and there's no duplicate indices, so negative one, one, and zero. That's one of our in, that's one of our possible triplets. And you also have negative one, negative one, and two as another one. Um, they also give you that nums one, num one, plus nums two, plus nums four, right here, zero, one, and negative one is another one. But notice that it contains the exact same elements, just in another order, as something a solution that we've already had. So. Uh, this is just an example of wanting to avoid triplets. Now, let's take a look at what we can do, um, and we'll just kind of look through a naive solution. We'll try and figure out the best solution possible, um, or just, just kind of the first solution that comes to mind, and then we'll try and optimize from there if we can optimize. So we have this array, negative 1, uh, all the way up to negative 4, and we know that, uh, sorry, I have an extra value. We know that um, from solving 2 sum 2, we can use a two-pointer method, uh, that takes the left and right uh, indices and kind of uh, con consolidates until you hit a valid solution, but that can only work if it's sorted. So let's try and sort this array. So once we sort it, which takes an, a time complexity of n log n time, um, that's just kind of how sorting algorithms work, then we sort it and we have this array, negative 4, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and this is the array that we are going to want to work with. Uh, please keep in mind that our time complexity has already been established to be a minimum of O of n log n, but Moving on, what we want to do here is we want to find three values, a, b, and c, um, a, b, and c, such that they are equal to zero. And what we can do is we can start setting in random hypothetical values for a. And if at any point during my explanation it starts to make sense and you think you got it, then I encourage you to pause the video and just try it out for yourself. But we're going to start plugging in random hypothetical values for a as we... So we're going to iterate through the list and we're going to try and set negative four as equal to a. So if negative four is equal to a and you want negative four b and c to sum to zero, that means b and c should sum to four, which means that we have this array, this sorted array with a target of four. And this is extremely, this is, this literally is the two sum, pro, two sum two problem. What we can do here is we'll set a left index here and a right index here and we'll find the sum of the two. Negative one plus two is one, and one is less than four, so we're going to increment uh, left. And neg negative one, it's the same thing, so one less than four, we'll increment left again, then we have zero, zero plus two is two, still less than four, so we'll increment left again, and one plus two is three, which is still left than four, less than four, so we can try and increment left again, but we can't have left and right at the same indices, because again, no duplicates, which means, four could not be a possible a value. <clears throat> okay, then that means we can increment four, um, or we can increment this a value to be instead of four, we'll eliminate four completely because we've gone through every possible solution and figured out that four, negative four will never work. We can set negative one to be our next possible a value. And if negative one is our next possible a value, then we want the sum of uh, any two elements from here to equal target is going to be one because that's the additive inverse of negative one. So we look through left and right, and we figure out how many how many are there. So negative one plus two is equal to one. So th th this is a solution that we want, which means that we can push this on to our solutions array. So we'll have negative one and we'll have two. So this is one possible solution, but let's keep going. Then we can um, increment left again and see if there's a, you know another solution out there for us. So zero plus two is gonna be two, which is greater than one, which means we have to decrement right. Uh, that's just how two pointer works. And zero plus one is one, which is equal to one. So we found another possible solution. We found negative one, zero, and one. And at this point, <clears throat> we can pretty much consider ourselves uh, done, but we have to continue to increment A uh, to see if there are any more solutions. So let's say we increment A again, and I'll do this one in green. So our A previously was not this negative one, and now we're checking um, to see if our A could be this negative one. And if our A is this negative one, then we kind of want to ignore it. We've already gone over all these solutions that contain negative one. 
So we can ignore this. We don't need this anymore, which means that if we hit a duplicate A value such that this A value was the exact same as the A value that came before it, then we continue onwards. We, we, we set our new A value to here. And at this point, you know that this just isn't going to work out because uh, 0, 1, and 2 are all greater than or equal to 0. So the only possible solution could be uh, sum to 3. So there's no extra solutions there which means our only two solutions are these two. Now let's take a look at the time complexity and the space complexity. So the time complexity, now remember we had uh, the sorting algorithm done, which is O of n log n, but we also have this array, neg four, negative one, zero, one, two, like this. <clears throat> we also have this array that we sorted through. And remember that this uh, left, right uh, kind of solution that we did, this is uh, linear time. So this is O of n, and we're doing that for every single element in this array, which means that this is O of n squared time. That's usually not the best, but for three sum, this is kind of, <clears throat> sorry, is kind of as good as it gets. Now for space complexity, obviously we're just returning an array that uh, contains all the possible elements, which means that's going to be linear time. So space is linear and time is quadratic. Uh, that's about as optimized as it gets. Let's take a look at how the code is gonna work. So the very first thing we're going to do is sort this nums array. So we'll use the sort function, but uh, JavaScript is kind of tricky with sort. So you have to manually put this uh, arrow function for sort to make sure that it actually sorts in a numerical order. And we'll let the result equal an empty array, which we're going to slowly push onto. Now we can start iterating through the nums array. And at this point, we are going to start setting in hypothetical values for A. So, uh, one, so one case that we do want to avoid is if we hit uh, i, i is greater than zero, um, you can't have a duplicate at the very start, uh, but you have a duplicate starting at, we're checking for duplicates starting at, I guess, the second index, um, the first index, the second element, <coughs> and nums i is equal to the nums i minus one, that the one that came right before it, then you can just continue onwards because we've already checked for all these cases. Now we're going to do two, uh, the, this two pointer method with um, left starting at i plus one as opposed to zero, because remember um, our a has already been instantiated as a, so we wanna check b and c with all the remaining elements and we can just set our right as uh, the very last index though. And we have while left is less than right, you have less than as opposed to less than or equal to because you don't want any duplicates. So in this case, we'll have less than. Um, we'll let target um, is going to be the additive inverse of um, our A. So remember, we want B and C equal to negative A. If A, B, C, if A plus B plus C is going to be equal to zero, then B plus C is going to be equal to negative A. So that's just kind of how that math works. Then uh, if target is less than nums left plus nums right, meaning the sum of our nums left and nums right is too big, then we want to decrement what we're at because it's too big. Uh, else if the target is if the target is greater than what we have so far, then what we want to do is we want to increment the left, right? Because we are uh, way too far left in the function. Um, finally, else we can we are equal, we, are, we have a solution, the target is equal to nums left plus nums right, and we can start pushing on to the results array that we have. Uh, if I could type, we're going to push A, which is nums i, B, which is nums left, and C, which is nums right. And once we are done with that, we can increment left to continue onwards, see if there's any additional solutions. But again, this is going to kind of be a repeat of uh, this one right here, while nums left is equal to nums left minus one. And another case that you have to consider is that left has to still be less than right uh, because you don't want to keep incrementing until you hit right. Um, because again, that might that might have a duplicate. But while this is happening, you want to continue to increment left. So you're going to increment left until you run out of duplicates. Um, and then at the very end, you can return the result. And if we submit this, then this should work. Oops, sorry. Um, I had a typo there. Submit and Wait a second. Okay, sorry, I was missing. I had a comma instead of a less than sign there. Sorry about that. And if we submit this here, then yep, that works.